Good morning. It's good to be with you again. I'm Alan White, a teacher here, and I'm bringing you uh, goodness and grace from God's Word. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, last week we talked about how God is uh, knows everything. He's omniscient. But not just that he knows everything, but he has unlimited wisdom and understanding about all things. And so uh, we need to believe that, we need to know that, we need to understand that, um, that there isn't anything we can hide from him and so on. That he has all truth, all knowledge, uh, all wisdom about everything. So about him we need to know that that is one of his characteristics, one of his traits, one of the things we can know about him. The other thing we want to talk about today is that God is knowable, that we cannot just know things about him, but we can know him personally, just like you know your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters. You know a lot more than just facts about your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters. You know them personally. It is a relationship. And that's what God wants. He doesn't just want us to know that he is omniscient and omnipotent and omnipresent and all of those things, all of the characteristics about God. He doesn't want us just to know facts about him. He wants us to know him personally. And I've got some scriptures here I want to share with you today how that will hopefully convince you or uh, help you to understand that I can know this God. This God is not out beyond my reach, beyond my understanding. Yes, his knowledge, his wisdom, and his, his understanding is infinite. Um, you could say facts about God are infinite. You can't know everything about God because... You have a limited brain. I have a limited brain. Uh, there's only so much, I suppose, that I can put in this head of mine. Um, but to know somebody personally doesn't mean that you have to know every little tiny detail about their life, about their history, about them, or whatever. You don't know your mother, your father, before you were born. You're not, you weren't with them when they were born. You weren't with them when they were growing up. So, even though maybe you heard stories about them, you still, you don't know all the facts and all the information, all the details about your father and your mother, but you still know them, and you know them very well, right? Or your brother and sister, you know them almost as well as you know yourself. So, we can know God personally, intimately, without knowing everything about him. And that's what we want to talk about today. And not only that, uh, one of the scriptures last week in Proverbs says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. If you seek wisdom and knowledge and understand, understanding, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. We didn't really talk about that last week. That just means to to honor him, to have a deep respect and reverence and appreciation and so on of God, who he is and what his role is or what his part is in my life or, you know, where, where do I fit into him and him and his plan? And so we can understand and have a real strong Respect. You could call it fear. The Bible talk calls it fear. Simply a very strong respect for God and reverence for Him. But it says also you will find the knowledge of God. Not just God's knowledge, but to know God. That's another, that's another part of that meaning. And later on in Proverbs 9, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It doesn't say knowledge about Him, but knowledge of Him. Uh, in other words, not things about Him, but just knowing Him is understanding. In other words, the more we under, know, the more we know Him, 
the more we will understand who we are, our life, our, our role in life and society, the world, understand what it is and why it is and how it works and why God made it and all of these things will start fitting together because we know Him. And if we know Him, we can start understanding why He does what He does and how we fit into that and so on. You understand what I'm saying? I hope so. Anyway, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It says here in Isaiah 43, 10, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that, so that, you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Now, the three things, last week I talked about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, how they go together, that God is unlimited in all three. Well, here we're going to talk about faith, knowledge, and understanding, and those three things. What does that mean? Now, we're talking about knowledge of God. God chose, here it says, His servant. He's talking, well, He's talking to the prophet, but He's also talking to all of us. Uh, he says, You are my witnesses and my servant whom I've chosen, so that you may know and believe me. So, you say, so that you may know me, so that you may believe me, so that you understand that I am He. I am God. So, once we understand that He is God, that we put our faith in Him, that we believe Him, not just believe in Him, but believe Him, believe His words, and believe in Him, that's trust, that's faith, and that we may know Him. See, those three things go together. Knowledge, faith, and understanding. We can't really have faith in God unless we know Him. We can't really understand Him unless we know Him. And so the three things go together. Now, so I'm starting with believing that God, knowing, let's say, knowing, knowing that God is God. I have a, had a student who, in my class, who said, well, why don't you ever use passages out of Ezekiel? That's probably because, because that's his name, Ezekiel. So he wants me to use uh, scriptures out of the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. I didn't do that today, but the fact is, in the book of Ezekiel, I looked it up because if you read the book of Ezekiel, you find that God is proving himself over and over and over again to his people and to everyone around, all the other nations, that he is God. He alone is God. There's only one God. There is no other God. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowledgeable. He is all-wise. He is all-everything. That He is God. And He's showing them over and over again through Ezekiel. I am God. Then you will know that I am God. It says 86 times, 86 times in the book of Ezekiel, He says, then they will know, or then you will know, that I am God. It's very, very important for us to know and believe that God is God. There is no other God. And that we have to put all of our life, our faith, our, our effort into knowing Him, following Him, obeying Him. He is, he is our goal, our purpose in life. And so God's going to show it that to you, uh, to us, I hope, that He doesn't just walk away from us and leave us but uh, that he would show himself to us. He'd say, then you will know. After this happens, after I do this, after do, I do that, then you will know that I am God and there is no other. So, in Ezekiel, 86 times, then you will know that I am God. But it's not just knowing that he's God, but to know him. So that's what I want to read in the rest of the passages here. To know him personally is his desire. He wants us to know him. He doesn't want us to just know about Him, to blindly obey Him like some, I don't know, some ruler out there who doesn't care anything about you or me or anything else. He just wants blind obedience. You have to, you've got these rules, you've got to obey these rules, uh, and, and everything else doesn't matter. That's not God. That's not our God. 
Our God wants us to know Him. He wants us to respond in obedience to Him because of our faith, because of our knowledge of Him. And you know, we're going to talk about that later. The more you know God, the more you will love God. God wants us to love Him. He wants us to know Him, and He wants us to love Him. But we're going to talk about that uh, at a later time. But to know Him is to want to obey Him because He deserves it. The more we know, this God is a good God. He, he did everything for me. I want to obey that God. I want to do what He tells me to do. I want to please Him. You see? So He wants us to know Him. Here it says in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. Now when we say boast, we mean brag, be proud of, I am a rich man, I am a strong man, I am a wise man, I know all things. To be proud of those things about yourself, God says, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't be proud and showing people uh, about how much money you have and how smart you are and, and how powerful you are over other people. Don't, don't worry about those things. Don't do those kinds of things. He says in verse 24, but let him who boasts, if you're going to boast about something, if you're going to brag about something, brag about this that he understands and knows me. Let me read that again. But let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me. He knows me. God's saying that through the prophet Jeremiah. If you're going to brag about something, brag about how, how you know God, how much you know him, how well you know him, and you understand him, his workings and his purpose and that everything, okay? That I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Now, we're letting, he's letting us in on something about himself. Who is this God? He's a good God. He's a God who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. The, that's something about God. He is a just God. He's a kind and good and gentle and loving God. And he is a righteous God. He himself is holy and righteous and pure and having no evil in him. If we know that about him, that that's what he exercises on the earth, he gives kindness. He gives goodness. He, exercise, he judges uh, rightly. He, he demands justice on the earth and he exercises righteousness on the earth as well. So if we understand and know him and understand and know him that about him, that that's the kind of God he is, that, and he delights in those things. That's what he really wants. He wants justice. He wants goodness and kindness. He wants uh, righteousness on the earth. That's what he delights in. That's what makes him happy uh, to, to see that on the earth. So if we know him and understand that that's what he's about, then we will exercise kindness and justice and righteousness on the earth as well. That's the way we will treat each other. That's the way we'll do our business. We will be right. We will be honest. We will be truthful. We will be uh, kind and gentle and good to other people. Right? Um, that's what we need to know about God. That's, I'm just trying to say, and you say, well, how do I get to know God? You get to know God through his word. Through this, this by, he tells him, he tells you and he tells me so much about himself. The more we read about him and his words, it's like listening to somebody talking to you. As you listen, to your friends, you get to know them. As you listen to your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters, you get to know them. As you watch them work with them, understanding that it's God's working here, you get to know them, right? And so that's what God wants. He wants you to get to know him through prayer 
as you pray to God, and and He prays, I mean, prays, He He talks back to you in, in your mind and so on, He does that, but He also specifically speaks to you through His Word. He lets you know about Himself. He reveals Himself to you. Now, He says in Jeremiah 24, I will give them a heart to know me, for I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart. Now, all mankind has rebelled against God, has turned away from God. We've all sinned. We've all done things that have been against God, rebellion against Him. But He says, come back to me, come back to me, return to me. He says, I will give you a heart to know me. And so, <clears throat> there's more in the Bible about that, how God changes your heart um, toward himself. And so he's saying there, uh, but why, why is he changing your heart? So that you will know him. So that you, and, and by knowing him, all the good that comes through that and from that. It says, I will give them a heart to know me. That's pretty clear. For I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart. Now, when you return to God with your heart, not just with your things that you do, you say, oh, well, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to start doing this and this and this. I'm going to go uh, and pray five times a day, and I'm going to do, you know, this, and I'm going to give money to the poor, and I'm going to do all these good things. No, God says, come back to me with your heart. Your heart, that's what he wants, is your heart. If you return to God with your heart and, and, and allow God to change your heart so that you can know him better and better every day, that's his delight, that's his desire, that's what he wants, okay? And out of that, then you do good things. You, the, all of those other things are good, to pray to God and you know to help the poor and so on, but it should be from your heart a heart that God has changed, a heart that knows God. You see what I'm saying? Okay, the last one, because I'm running out of time. Hosea, he's another prophet in the Old Testament. He says, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. Now, you have it there in your handout, the word betroth. You're probably never going to see this word outside of the Bible. But it's not a bad word. Uh, it's okay for you to learn. Betrothed means to be engaged. It means engaged to someone. Like, uh, that's the word we use it today. Uh, to be married. You, you talk to, you know, you get to know someone or you have uh, marriage arrangements or whatever. And so you're, uh, you agree to marry this person, but you're not married yet. You're going to get married in a few months or weeks or whatever. So in that time, after you've decided to marry, you're betrothed. You're engaged to someone. Now, so God says, and, but in the Old Testament, uh, in that word means it's not something that can, you can change. Once you're betrothed, it's like you're married. You don't get a divorce. You don't get, it doesn't, uh, it's finished in that sense. It will happen. So God says, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. I'm going to bring you to myself in marriage. And you say that's a strange thing, but God marries us. Um, it says, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. His faithfulness, will he will never break that covenant of that bond of marriage with you. He is faithful, but he will betroth you to himself in faithfulness as well. He expects you to be faithful to him, just like a wife or a husband is faithful to each other, right? He expects you to be faithful. So he says, I will betroth you to myself or to me in faithfulness. Then you will know the Lord. Isn't that interesting? He's going to marry you. He's going to marry me in a bond, a commitment, a covenant, um, a, a relationship in which he will reveal himself to you and you will get to know him. And of course he knows you, but you see what, isn't that, it's wonderful. I mean that idea of, wow, 
God is going to marry me and reveal himself to me in such a way that I will know him so personally that it's like a marriage. You see what I'm saying? Come, let us return to the Lord. That's going back to the Lord again. Let us return to the Lord. Let us know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. Let's make an effort. Press on. Uh, strive. Uh, try really hard to know him. Make an effort to read this book. Make an effort to find out who is this God. I want to know him, right? Uh, let us know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. And he will come to us like the rain, like the rain, the spring rain watering the earth. He is certain. Just like the sun coming up every day, God is faithful. You can count on him. He is a good God who is faithful to do what he says. You can, you can believe it. You can trust it. He is as faithful as, or as certain as the sun coming up. Uh, he will be like the rain coming, uh, like the spring rain, rain watering the earth, a dry earth that needs this rain. That's, that's what God can be for you and he can be for me. It's, why wouldn't you want to know this God? This God is so great and so wonderful. And he says, I want you to know me. Wow, why would God do that? Why would he want me to know him? Who am I? But that's the point. He cares about me. He cares about you. He loves you. He loves me. And he wants us to know him. So God is knowable. Just as much as he knows everything, at the same time, he reveals himself to you and to me so that we may know him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to understand him. He wants us to, um, to trust him, obey him, all of those things. But it starts with knowing him. He will give you a heart. If you ask, if you come to him, if you return to him, and you say, God, change my heart so that I can know you, he will do that. He promises it in here in the book, in his Bible. So, please, understand, understand with your mind and your heart that God wants you to know him. He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants uh, to have a relationship with you. Think about that. Pray about it. That's my lesson for you today. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for giving us your word, giving us knowledge of yourself, giving us all that we need to know you, to love you, to serve you, to commit ourselves to you totally, completely, as in a marriage, uh, where we would serve you and, and, and um, and lift you up and give you honor and glory throughout our lives. That's what I pray for every student here. I pray it for our, our teachers as well. Lord, that we would come to know you personally and, and understand your goodness, your grace, your truth, your love, all the good things about you, Lord, your justice even, that we should fear you, uh, in a, in not in a uh, fearing a terrible... Um, oppressive government, but in a fear of like a father, that we know you have authority over us, we know you have power over us, uh, and so, but we love you anyway, because you're such a good God and you're kind. And so, Lord, help us to understand all of that. Help us to believe it. Help us to come back to you. Help us to pray to you that we would have a changed heart to know you and to live for you. That's my prayer today. I pray these things in Jesus' name. 